Hi there, and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. In this video, we're going to be creating this super cool particle simulation that reacts to the music. As you can see, the speed and the color of those particles is reacting to our audio track. We'll have a lot of fun creating this if you follow along, but if you want to download the project file completely for free, follow the link in the video description to my Gumroad, where you can enter in a zero for the price and download the file on your own computer. Let's get started. Alrighty, so I've just opened up Blender to the default layout. First, I want to delete this light, and I'm going to keep the cube and the camera. The cube, I'm actually going to select and press Shift D to duplicate it. And then if I click my mouse wheel, I can drag it to the side and it'll stay along the Y axis. Scoot this cube way off to the side. This cube that's right in the center, I'll select and go over to my little wrench icon to my modifiers, and I want to add a subdivision surface modifier and we'll take the levels in both viewport and render up to three. Then we'll add one more piece of geometry, shift A to add a plane. And I'm gonna go into wireframe view so that I can see inside of this sphere. And I'm gonna scale down my plane so that it's really small and fits inside of the sphere. And I'll look at the project orthogonally from the front with one on the number pad. So I snap my view to the front and then I'm gonna rotate my plane slightly with R on the keyboard and then G to grab, and I'll place my plane up in the corner, still inside my sphere completely. So these will be the two objects in our particle simulation. The plane will emit objects, and the sphere will collide with them. So first, for the plane, let's name this emitter. And then for this cube, let's rename it collide. So with collide selected, we can go down to physics properties and choose a collision modifier. Then I'll increase my damping to about 75% or about 0.75. And then for our emitter, we can select our little plane and go to the particle properties, and we want to add a particle system. And it comes with a few default settings. We can see that it will make a total number of 1,000 particles. They will arrive between frames 1 and 200, and they'll live for 50 frames. And this is one of our particles here on frame 1 starting to appear. We can timeline if we drag forward there's our particles colliding with our sphere. So the first step is to change what this particle is. So we have this other cube here. I'm gonna select that cube, and go to my wrench modifiers and decimate the cube. I'm gonna drag it down to about 0.6 or 0.7. Then if I hit a tilde on the keyboard and go to view selected, I can zoom over to that object. So you can see this is exactly what I want. It's simplified because I'm going to be using this as the particle. So it will render thousands of these in the scene. We want it to be simple and also reflect the light well. Now I'll select the sphere and hit the tilde and go to view Select it again. And now to select your plane, you can either go to wireframe view or always in your collection, you can choose the emit by name. And you can see now that it's selected. So in the particle system settings, go down to render. And right now it's render as halo. We want to render as object. And then to be able to see this again, let's change to wireframe view. And the instance object that we want to render is that decimated cube that we created, a cube 001. So you can see now that's that one particle that we created is that instancing that cube 001. Let's rename it particle. So we're instancing that object, and we can change the scale. If you drag the scale all the way to the left, it's 0 0.01. That's good for us. And then we can increase the scale randomness all the way to 1. Now when we press play or drag through our timeline, you'll see that the objects are li small little diamonds. So now when we press play, you'll see that those instance objects are going to be emitted for 200 frames, and they'll live for 50 frames by default. And it looks like this because of the Newtonian physics. If we expand physics over here, we want to change this from Newtonian to fluid. This will be the first big difference if we press play again. And the objects are moving kind of fast. You can see here, if we expand velocity, they start with a normal velocity of one meter a second. We can drag that down to zero and then press play again, and they'll travel slower. And then select our collider again, and go to its properties, the physics properties, and 
increase the randomization slightly and increase the damping even more to 0.9. And I'll go back to the particle emitter and increase our number to 5,000 just so we get particles arriving in the scene. So you can see our settings here at frame 200, particles stop being emitted from this plane here because of our frame start and end. We could decrease this to only 50, and then all of the particles would leave that plane within only 50 frames, and they've stopped there by frame 50. So the overall density of your project will be controlled by the total number and the frame start and end. And then the lifetime controls how long each particle lasts. If you want to make it last as long as your animation, like 250, now the particles will all stay and none will disappear through the entire animation. And you could mess with the mass of your object. Increase it by a few points. So now let's finally animate these particles to the music. I'm going to press Shift A to add a force field and add a turbulence force field. And if we go over to the physics properties of our turbulence field, we can keyframe these settings to the sound and they'll affect our particles as they fly around inside of our sphere. Let's just take a test with these set. I've increased the strength, size, and flow. So you can see now how that turbulence force field is affecting our particles. I'm gonna increase my size to 10 and my flow to five, and watch it again. So let's finally bring in some audio. I'm gonna right click on my timeline and create a horizontal split and bring in my video sequencer. Here I'm at the first keyframe and I'm gonna add sound. You can select your audio and then add your sound strip. And on your sound strip, you can see the length of your audio, 4776. So that's the number of frames, 4776. You can enter that in on your timeline. And now our timeline is as long as our audio, 4776. And then we're done with our video sequencer. We can change it over to our graph editor. So the first step after extending your timeline is to go back to your particle emitter and extend the lifetime of the particles to whatever the length is. So lifetime, 4776. And I might increase my end frame to 400. Now let's select our turbulence. Go to its physics properties, make sure we're at keyframe zero, hover over the strength and press I. So we've inserted a keyframe. And now in our graph editor, we can select that strength F curve, key, bake sound to F curve. Select your audio. And, and before you bake your sound, you can select your frequency range. For this, I'll go from zero to 500 so that my strength of my turbulence is reacting to the bass in the music. I like to reduce my attack time and release time for this setting. Then I'll bake sound. So you can see now this F curve isn't flat anymore. It isn't just set at 50. It changes with the music. It's dynamic. And the first thing we want to do is modify this F curve. So we can go to modifiers, add modifier, and add an envelope modifier. And then we can add a control point. By dragging out the X and Y, we can increase and decrease how dynamic this curve is. And looking over here at the side of your graph editor, you can see at 0 to 50 is what I want my power to go from. So I'll drag my control point out until my transformation is going from 0 to 50. That looks about good. Now let's keyframe another aspect, the flow. I'll hover over flow and press I. Now we have a flow keyframe over here in our graph editor. You can select flow, key, bake sound F curves. Select your audio. And this time select a different audio range. Go from 500 to 2000, bake sound to F curves. And we're going to apply the same envelope modifier to this F curve, add the control point, drag out the X and Y. But this time I'm going to add another modifier, a limits modifier. This will give us a maximum and minimum value so what the limit means for our animation is that it'll be moving really fast and then stop and come to a halt and then move fast again. And we can change that by the limit coming in and 
squaring off the top and bottom of our curve. So what we've done here is control the strength and size of our turbulent force field. Let's watch the animation. To make a quick change, I'm going to select the particles and increase the mass of the particle up to 10 kg. And let's watch it again. I'm moving your F curves up and down and playing with the different settings and watching the animation a few times to see what you could like. And you'll be able to come up with a different result that you prefer. One more time, I'm going to hover over the size and press I. So with size selected, key, fake sound F curves. And again, I'll go from 2000 to 4000 to select a different audio range. And then I'll modify the curve with an envelope modifier and add the control point. And then this transformation, I only want to happen between 0 and 10. So we can use our limits modifier, maximum Y and Y put that minimum at y, maximum 10, and then you can stretch out your control points and you know it'll stay between them. If you want the effect to be more visible, take your number up to 10,000. And I've found that sometimes it's a balance of going back to my particle settings and reducing my gravity in the scene. I have it about halfway, about 0.5. And then my turbulence is more visible. It has a bigger effect on the particles and they don't stay down at the bottom of the sphere as much. I could increase my gravity and they would stay more at the bottom of the sphere. So first to get this ready to render, we need to apply a material to our cube, to our particle. So I'm gonna select the particle, go down to material, change my graph editor over to my shader editor. And I'm actually gonna change this material from a principled BSDF to an emission. And I'm going to shift A in my shader editor for a color ramp. And you can shift A and look for it, or shift A, S, and search color ramp. Plug your color into your color of your emission. And the next step we can only do in the cycles render engine. So you'll need to turn on cycles for this, but you can pull up a particle info node if you shift A to search particle info node. And on this particle info node, there's a velocity group so we can take the velocity of our particles and plug it into the factor of the color ramp. So the speed of our particles will affect the color from white to black. Or we can select this color ramp handle, click on the color and change it to whatever color we like. Select this other one. And I might increase my emission to 15 for now. And then we're going to have to go over to our render properties and turn on cycles. Change it from EV to cycles and go from CPU to GPU compute. Right away, turn down your viewport samples to only something like 50, and maybe your final render samples to 1,000 maximum. And since we are using cycles, you could try to save your render time a little bit by decreasing your light bounces. If you open up light paths, you could decrease your total light bounces to some, if you would click and drag over all of these and just hit two, for example. And then first to see our material, we need to change over to rendered view in our viewport. I'm going to press zero to look through the camera, change over to rendered view. And you can see our background of our world is gray. If we go to our world properties, we could change the background. And our collision object is showing right now. We haven't changed the material of our collision object. We can edit a collection for now. And if we press play, the particles still react with that collision object. So it's sort of difficult to tell in this preview because it's so noisy, but our color of our particles is changing depending on their speed. You can see there are some blue particles and some pink particles in there. So you can spend a whole lot more time syncing this color up, dragging your handles left and right, and maybe even adding some more nodes to add a different color that, to that effect. If you want to be able to preview this in better quality, 
you can go to your particle system and bake in these transformations. So if you select bake, your computer will think through the entire simulation and cache that ready for you to watch at a much higher quality. So I'll select bake if we press play. I'm gonna add a plane in, a ground plane, G to move it down and S to scale it a bunch. And looking through my camera with zero, I'm gonna scale that plane until it goes way out beyond. And with that plane selected, I'm just gonna to go to the material preview, go to my material properties and add new. And this, I'm just gonna make a dark material and make it metallic so it's reflective and reduce the roughness. And now you can start to see the reflection of the world. This is where you could go in and load a different default HDRI if you go up by your viewport shading. Click on this HDRI and you could change the reflection that you see drastically just by changing this HDRI. It's an easy way to manipulate the lighting in your scene. To zoom in my camera a little bit, while I'm looking through my camera, I can click on this rectangle to select the camera and I'll just bring in my focal length a bit. So I'm focusing on that sphere. So you could make this sphere invisible and just have the particles render, or you could apply a material to this outer collision sphere as well. So with that sphere selected, I'll just go into my material preview and in my material properties, press new. And I wanna make this look a little bit like glass. So I'm gonna increase the transmission all the way and decrease the roughness almost all the way. Now my reflections, if I go into rendered view, will look really weird. And that's because this glass material works if you have a solid material. Right now there's only a single plane to the mesh, but if we add a solidify modifier to this sphere, you now get that effect that we're looking into a glass orb and it has these particles floating around inside of it. So you've got your timeline set, now you're ready to export your file. You just have to choose your output location, change your file format from PNG to FFmpeg video, and then expand your encoding and change the container to MPEG-4. This will output an MP4 file. Then change your output quality from medium quality to perceptually lossless. And we wanna include our audio, so our audio codec should be AAC. And now your settings are all ready to export. You could increase your resolution to 3840 by 2160 to make a 4K image but this will just take more time for your computer to think through while it's rendering. So before you render, always make sure to go back to your emitter and your particle settings and make sure that you had baked your last setting. So you baked it in and it's cached. All your computer has to do is render the final images. So remember to save your file one more time. I'm gonna name this file Turbulent Sphere and it's how you'll find it on my Gumroad if you go to download it for free. And then to render your animation, you can go up to render and render animation, and this will output your MP4 file. An animation of this length will take some time to render through. I estimate this could take anywhere from one to eight hours, depending on your computer's strength. So good luck. All right, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Don't forget the file is available on my Gumroad and be sure to subscribe because I'll have new stuff coming out soon.